17th of September 2009. Hope everyone is doing magnificent. I have a lot to cover today regarding healthcare, swine flu, and I want to get through it uh, a little quickly so I can get this around the 10 minute mark. First off, I had a video message from Dave who goes by the name of CDMCL3 who was uh, talking about the United States healthcare reform package and in comparison to the Canadian one, he was mentioning how us Canadians live on average about two years longer than the American citizens do. And I haven't really checked uh, life, uh, average lifespans for different countries, but I'd only take an educated guess that uh, many places in Europe would even be do, doing better than Canada. It seems as if the countries like Switzerland and France and Sweden, I mean, they're the countries that I idolize the most for the way they they run their countries. But nonetheless, uh, people think that Canada is all this free health care and freer than other places, yeah, completely free, no, as if you need to see a doctor, you need to go to... Uh, emergency, you need uh, some sort of operation, it's covered. And I've always been wondering why it's uh, correct or fair for people to spend so much money when they need heart surgery. And I guess a lot of people have to go without. And to me, that is extremely unfortunate because of the way the monetary system has uh, gotten into play. Uh, we've seen, uh, it, so many people not able to uh, pay for the healthcare situation. A lot of it just goes back to the monetary system that I've talked about with the system where the rich get richer and the poor getting poorer, that if you're poor, you're probably sick, and if you're sick, you're not gonna be able to get any help anyway. Uh, here, you get some of it, but I mean, you still gotta pay for ambulances, crutches, uh, Rx medications, prescriptions. The only way you get prescriptions for free or cheap is if you're working for a company that's got a nice benefit plan or you are sick enough to be on the disability program, which is another issue because it seems that not only here in Canada, but I guess throughout most of the world, that the only way that a lot of times are going to treat you if you're poor and sick is if you're very, very sick. And to me, I see this as a little bit of a concern because instead of waiting to address this at the root of the problem, they wait till there is uh, too much already uh, as far as damage is concerned. And uh, when we see uh, how much they do to get people sick, it's just inevitable that it's going to happen. And I think a lot of the reason why is because of our physical thoughts, our emotions. And I know a lot of people don't, don't like to hear this, but it seems true to me that the majority of people in this world do not like themselves or AKA hate themselves. And when that is the case, that means you're not going to like others or hate others. Whereas if you love yourself, then the uh, attraction or the manifestation from that will be uh, loving others. And I know the world is moving towards that point of view, but it takes a lot of time, effort and work to get there. And when we can get away from this monetary system that is that dependent on greed, eliminate the greed, then we can be able to have these improvements uh, in this world. So uh, that's uh, pretty much what I want to say about that. Now let's go on to some articles and videos, all of the links, more info. First one, CNBC reports last night, hosted by Dennis Neal. He had guest Republican Anthony Weiner from New York, uh, I'm not lying about the name, and Republican Robert Andrews. And they uh, had a heated discussion, to say the least, uh, for about 10 minutes. And it was uh, asked when the Republicans asked Mr. Neal if the use of government's takeover phase is false or phrase is false, uh, there was a major heated discussion. Uh, check the link, it's about five minutes into the clip and they get at it for about 10 minutes. Next one, these are articles, the next three articles are all from Global TV, they are also all in the more info. First one, Health Minister orders probe of H1N1 body bag shipment to Manitoba natives. Manitoba is a province in between the provinces of Ontario and Saskatchewan. I think it's north of Wisconsin, I'm guessing. Anyway, Federal Health Minister Leona Aglikak, uh, I don't know, forgive me if I pronounce it wrong. The name looks uh, very Nineveh. 
Uh, but she says that she's ordered an investigation into disturbing reports of federal government shipments of body bags to First Nations communities hit hard by the H1N1 flu. First Nations chiefs in the northern Manitoba communities of St. Teresa Point, West Sagamak, and Garden Hill went public Wednesday with news that federal shipments of materials intended to help their communities fight the flu included 30 body bags. Man, just to hear the name body bags associated with H1N1, it kind of makes me wonder where this whole thing is leading to. But you're seeing a lot of fear-based news from it. Uh, but the one uh, paragraph or line on this article I thought was very interesting. I'm going to read it here. With at least 100 people diagnosed with flu this spring across seven northern communities, the chiefs say they were also facing a shortage of medical personnel and supplies, including hand sanitizer, hand sanitizers. Um, to me, I'm thinking, okay, facing shortage of personnel and supplies. Do you not think this is a product of the monetary system? We have so many people unemployed, yet we have a shortage of people working. And you could say, well, not everybody could do this type of work because you got to be in the medical field. And I guess that's what happens when we spend our time and resources for stuff like building nuclear bombs and going to war. Instead of trying to get people educated on stuff that actually matters, but that's what happens on a fear and greed based society, in my opinion. And a shortage of uh, supplies, to me, expect a lot, a lot of this, not just in the healthcare industry, but everywhere as part of the inventory bubble that's going to come into play. Second article. Those at greatest risk, first in line for swine flu vaccine, Canada's public health officials are recommending people who are at greatest risk of complications from swine flu, which are people under 65 with chronic conditions, pregnant women, children six months to five years old, and those living in remote and isolated settings and communities should be among the first to be vaccinated the priority list is released by the Public Health Agency of Canada is designed to decrease sickness and deaths and to try and maintain the smooth functioning of society during an anticipated fall outbreak of human swine flu. Anticipated fall outbreak. To me, on a personal level, this whole story becomes very fishy when it's been over six months since the whole introduction to swine flu has came into play. And they keep on hyping this up like it's going to be bad, and yet we don't see anything, at least I don't see anything, that signifies that it's spreading worse and that it's a major concern, especially when you compare it to the regular flu. Now, it's interesting when you think about how the media comes on saying what they say, like stuff like, all the signs lead to an economic recovery because one can say they don't want to be negative and they only want to try to be positive. And if that's the case, I would understand. But if that's, that was true, why wouldn't they say the same thing about this, that stuff like swine flu uh, related deaths are going lower, the outbreak really hasn't been coming to global scales. See, to me, that seems contradictory. So. I personally would do a lot of research if you actually were considering getting the shot. My, and it's hard, it's hard because I've got evidence for both sides of the case and I even did some uh, pendulum or uh, spirit work to try to get an answer on whether I should take it and it came with a clear no, so I'm not going to be taking it. But it's interesting how they want to target the pregnant women, the children, the people who are really sick because, I mean, of course, uh, that's just going to have a big problem if that's the case. And, of course, the conspiracy people are right that the swine flu is actually going to be a problem. I don't know if it is or not, but I do question whether it is or it isn't. Finally, the last article, uh, one in five Canadian children obese as this uh, article from Vancouver says, one in five Canadian children were considered obese between the ages of two to 11, according to a six-year survey released Wednesday by Stats Canada. 
the Canadian National Long Longitudinal Survey of Children looked at the body mass index of boys and girls between these uh, from the people who were born from 98 to 203 and found that 22% of girls and 19% of boys were classified as obese at some point during the uh, period. That's pretty uh, frightening in my opinion that that's the case. And once again, it's a mainstream article. Take it for what it's worth, uh, who they surveyed, what the accurate numbers are. I don't know, but uh, nonetheless, if this is true, and that's a big if, you kind of wonder about stuff going on in our modern day culture with like fast food, uh, places like McDonald's and Burger King and Harvey's and Wendy's and all of those places. Uh, then you throw in stuff about pesticides, aspartame. There's just so much. Flor well, fluoride doesn't make people obese, I guess. But nonetheless, to me, it seems as if a lot of the stuff going around us is making it uh, very difficult for uh, people to not be obese. Uh, back when uh, 50s and before 60s, before we had this whole fast food situation, I think more people were more athletic. They were stronger in that field. Yes, they didn't live as long because of uh, not as much medical advances and uh, abuse of alcohol and drugs. But nonetheless, I still, still think that they were more healthy as far as just every day going out and surviving health is concerned. So I'm going to leave this uh, story at uh, this. Uh, but thank you for watching, everybody, and have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.